I don't think there's ever been a more requested product from Ubiquiti than a NAS, and they finally have done it. This is the UNAS Pro, and today we're going to talk about who it's for and what you can do with it. Let's get into it. Real quick, if you haven't already purchased a UNAS and you want one, I strongly recommend you do so immediately because I suspect these are going to sell like hotcakes. Let's talk about the tech specs. Now, the UNAS Pro looks almost identical to the NVR Pro, and really the only way that you can tell them apart is by the labeling on the front underneath the touchscreen. We have seven hard drive slots, a one gigabit copper port, and a 10 gigabit SFP Plus port. On the back, we have an RPS port in addition to the locking AC power connector. In terms of compute, we have a four core ARM processor and eight gigabytes of RAM. Now, in terms of value, the price point this is being sold at is actually quite a steal, especially when we compare it to appliances from Synology. And in the Synology world, we're really paying for the software over the hardware. But with that said, let's get into the software because the UNAS Pro doesn't hold any punches here. Now, if you are looking to replace your home lab solution with, where you're running Docker and VMs, this is not a good fit for you. The UNAS is what I would consider a pure NAS solution. It doesn't do all those other things, although technically it could because it does run Linux. It instead focuses on being a really easy to use and seamless file storage and file sharing solution. So if you're running a business or maybe you just want to store all of your personal files on a NAS, this is going to be a very solid solution for you. And it's going to be one that just kind of works. And the really cool thing is that in a lot of cases, this is going to be able to replace Google Drive or OneDrive for many of you. So let's take a look at the UI. Now, if you've worked with other Unify products, this interface is going to feel very familiar. In the upper left hand corner, we have our various drive statuses being displayed. And you can see that I currently have four drives installed. Below there, we can see the addresses we'll need to use if we want to mount an SMB file share. Now, SMB is off by default, but it is going to be the fastest way to access files on your NAS, especially if you're on the same network. Now, there are other ways that you can access those files, and we'll get to that shortly. Just below there, we can see any recent activity on the NAS, and then on the top there, we can see the status of replication task, either for backup or just general replication task. Below there, we can, of course, see throughput, and if we scroll down, we can see our various shared and personal drives. If you're a Google Workspace user, this is gonna feel very familiar. Personal drives are created by default for each individual user, and you can disable them. Whereas shared drives are created for a number of users and they are owned not by a particular person, but by the NAS itself. These are great for organizational level files, and you can kind of see how I've laid out things here. Let's go ahead and demonstrate what it is like to create a shared drive. We can, of course, enforce a storage limit, and then we can assign permissions. By default, all administrators have access. There are three types of permissions, owner, editor, and viewer. To create the drive, we just click here. Now we can modify those settings just by clicking on the drive, going to settings, and modifying them here. We can also set up snapshotting. If you don't know what snapshotting is, it's really cool. It lets us do version control of our files. And it does so without making a complete backup, so it only saves the changes that you've made. So if you've deleted a file or modified a file, it only uh, duplicates the changes that you've made. Now, it's not a replacement for backups, but it is really cool to be able to go and recover work that you may have accidentally deleted. So how do we get files into here? Well, we can just take our file. In this case, I'm going to grab this photo I took at Starbase and drag it in. We can also click on this plus button right here to browse our computer for a particular file, create a folder, or upload an entire folder. Now that I have this file in here, I can of course duplicate it, delete it, move it around, but I wanna show you what I think is the coolest feature of the UNAS. And we can show you that feature by clicking right here and then choosing to copy a link. I can choose to set a password for that link or an expiration, and I can send that link to anyone. No DNS setup required. It just works. To show you what it looks like, I have a new window open that's an incognito, so I'm not signed into any Ubiquity account. I'm gonna paste that link in. And there's my photo. Of course, I can download it right from here. Now, for those of you who work in content creation, this is gonna be a pretty cool use case to be able to share large project files with your clients. We're actually working with a video production house right now that is planning on replacing Dropbox with a UNAS for this exact use case. 
Now, shared links are great for sharing files outside of your organization, but what about within your organization, especially if you don't want to have to log into a web browser every time you need to access files? And for those of you that are on the same network as your UNES, I'd recommend using SMB. Let's take a look at what that looks like. To mount your files over SMB, we're going to go back to the dashboard. We're going to copy the appropriate link. In this case, I'm going to grab the link for Mac. And then on Mac OS, I'm going to make sure that Finder is selected. I'm going to hit Command-K. I'm going to paste that link in here. Oh, and forgot this won't work if you're not on the same network. Now, I already previously entered my login credentials, so I don't need to type them in again, but you can see all of the various shared drives, and I can mount however many I want to. In this case, let's just mount test, and I'll also mount my personal drive. And there's that image. I can interact with it just like any other file on my computer, and if I want to see this, where my files are at, I can come down here, and we can see there is my UNAS. Here's all of the various drives and of course my personal drive. Now this isn't the only way that you can access files on your UNAS. You can also do so from the Identity app, either on a computer or on your mobile phone. Future Coda here, a pretty cool feature that was just announced after I finished filming this video is the ability to automatically mount your SMB file share right here from Identity. Now Identity is a big play for Ubiquity, so the functionality that we see in Identity is going to be improving dramatically over the future. And the cool thing about Identity is that we can access our other resources like joining the Wi-Fi network, VPN credentials, uh, Talk, for example, if you're running Unified Talk. So Identity is going to be a really convenient place to have your files integrate seamlessly with your existing device file systems. So we've talked about the various ways that you can access and share files on the UNAS. Let's go deeper and take a look what we have in settings. Now the first thing that we're going to see here is our backup task. And this is probably by design because the first thing that you should do when you get your UNAS, if you're planning on using it in production, is to create a backup schedule for your files. Now we can actually define which drives we want to back up and even which files get backed up. And currently there are three places that we can back up our files to. The first is another UNAS. So if you want to get two of them, you could put one at a remote location and that could be your backup location. The second thing we can back up to is an existing SIFS or SMB file share. And this is actually what we're going to do because we currently have a Synology that we're using for our disaster recovery server. So we'll create a schedule to back up all of our files every single night to that offsite Synology. The third option is Google Drive and that's exactly what I'm doing here. Now this is a great solution for many of you who are going to be moving to a NAS solution for the first time and maybe you don't want to invest the capital in having multiple NASs and, and you just want to get your feet wet but you still want to have backups and so you can use your existing Google Drive account as a backup and you can configure the schedule for, to do this uh, however often you want to and you can have different schedules for different drives. So maybe your more mission critical data you back up every night whereas if you have large archives of data that's less critical Maybe you only run those backups once a month. Below that, we can see our snapshot settings and we can modify our snapshot settings for each of our drives. Then here, we can see the status of any shared link. And as an administrator, we can also remove a shared link. So this is a great cybersecurity feature. And I wanna make one note here though, and that is that shared links from personal drives will not show up here. And here is where we can modify our SMB file settings or disable SMB altogether. We can also enable encryption on specific drives, which is really cool because encryption does introduce a little bit of a compute overhead. So maybe we only encrypt our most sensitive files like finance and HR files, whereas video production files, which are pretty big, we simply do not encrypt them. Now it is important to note that when you restart your UNAS, you will need to log into the interface here and enter in your encryption key to unlock those drives. And these files aren't end-to-end -end encryption, so what that means is that if you are backing up to Google Drive or you're sharing a file via a link, it will be unencrypted and then re-encrypted over SSL. So just keep that in mind if you're looking for a true end-to-end -end encryption solution. But this is more than sufficient for most businesses. Of course, we can modify our push notifications and we can go to the control plane to update our UNAS and add users. Now, one thing I would recommend is going over here to Identity and enabling Unify Identity, adding a logo for your business. Now, this is the free version of Identity, so, but if you are using Identity Enterprise, you can integrate that here as well. Alternatively, you can also pull in users from Microsoft 365 and Google Workspace.
Now, if you want a complete setup guide of how we would recommend configuring Unified Drive on the UNAS Pro, stay subscribed because we're gonna be releasing that video in a couple of days. And we're actually gonna be moving all of our files out of Google Drive into UNAS and using that as our full-time file system for production. And if you're a client of ours, we're gonna be sharing links with you from that exact UNAS. Now, something I wanna share with the community. It's important to keep in mind this is Ubiquiti's first entrance into the NAS market. So this product line is only gonna get more mature as time goes on, and especially as they release future hardware in the future. But if you were a home labber and you're running Proxmox or TrueNAS or Synology, this is probably gonna feel disappointing to you because this is not a competitor to a home lab environment. This is a business solution, and it's really designed for those that want seamless file storage and file sharing outside of the cloud in their own network rack. And as a business owner, I'm looking forward to removing my files from Google Drive and having them in my own network rack and being able to share those files seamlessly with our clients. And I'm gonna share with you guys what that experience is like over the next several months. So if you aren't following us on X, make sure you do so. Now, until I see you guys in the next video, I will see you at the Unify World Conference in Miami later this week. Bye for now.